Welcome to Frontline News from the University of Maryland School of Medicine News Center. I'm Larry Roberts. Coming up, the CVD's mix and match COVID vaccine study is published by the New England Journal of Medicine. But first, an update on the condition of David Bennett, who received the world's first pig heart transplant on January 7th. He is remarkably alert. When I get to the point of the window in front of his room, he's usually aware, right? He kind of knows what's going on and he'll give me a wave and he'll use, usually beckon me, you know, and then he'll want to tell me he wants to go home. <laughs> when can I go home? And so as long as he's asking me that, I think we're, we have the right frame of mind. Dr. Bartley Griffith led the team of surgeons and specialists who performed the historic xenotransplant. It would not have been possible without decades of research conducted by Dr. Mohamed Mohiuddin. He says the heart is performing very well. It's beating very well, it's showing no signs of rejection. And, you know, in fact, it's beating so well that we have to give drugs to, to slow, slow it down a little bit. We're feeling progressively confident that we're, we're ahead of issues with respect to heart rejection for a while, months maybe. Along with conventional drugs to suppress his immune system, Mr. Bennett is receiving an experimental anti-rejection drug. The drug prevents T cells and B cells from triggering an attack on the heart. But our main uh, drug that uh, we are using is anti-CD40, uh, which we have shown in our previous experiments in, in non-human models that is very critical. So this, this antibody, anti-CD40, is not used uh, clinically uh, in transplant these days, uh, and, and, and uh, it, it's only used experimentally. Dr. Griffith says Mr. Bennett is also improving because of the round-the-clock care he receives from an army of specialists and nurses. It's an array of, of, of specialists that include people who focus on infection prevention, uh, people who are what we call critical care physicians who just really spend their life taking care of patients who are in ICUs. It includes our wonderful group of cardiologists. The team also includes respiratory therapists, clinical pharmacologists, and physical therapists. He basically has a, his own personal trainer, if you wish, physical therapist. And they'll do passive range of motion exercises and then active range, which means, you know, to work against resistances. Mr. Bennett has now lived longer than the first person to receive a human heart transplant in 1967. It will be a slow progress, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't expect him to go home uh, very soon. I mean, it will be a process of, uh, uh, you know, long rehabilitation and, and we'll help him with that. And uh, hopefully in one day, uh, he'll be able to go home and walk his dog that he wishes to do. In our discovery segment, an important vaccine booster study conducted by the Center for Vaccine Development and Global Health is published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The study found mixing and matching booster vaccines was safe and effective, and in some cases better than following up with the original vaccine. The study measured serum antibody levels 15 days after booster vaccinations. Really what we're interested in is your neutralizing antibody, and the neutralizing antibody is very specific to the virus. So while your total antibody production is important, the neutralizing antibody is critically important. And we now know that if you can get over a threshold of 100, you have about a 91% protection against symptomatic COVID. We've established that these boosts all work to get you above 100, but some work much better than others. Dr. Like says investigators continue to follow the study participants so that new questions about COVID vaccine protection can be addressed over time. The next question is gonna be, do we need additional boosts? How can we do a better job at anticipating what variants are coming down the pike? And can we expand the breadth of our immune response so that we are able to cover future variants of concern that we might not anticipate or be aware of you know, today? And that's Frontline News. I'm Larry Roberts. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again in two weeks.